Nick, first of all, I want to come back to why this wasn't raised in PMQs in a minute, uh, Ukraine at all. But tell us what you know. You've been searching the wires and looking. What do we know uh, that is happening in Russia at the moment? Well, we know this announcement was made by the defence minister. And as you say, it's a sort of test of combat readiness. Now, according to Reuters agency, it's not the first time there's been a test of combat readiness since President Putin was re-elected president. There have been a number of these. So when you hear it initially, people might think, my goodness, they're about to roll in. Mm. It could be sabre rattling. I mean, it clearly is deliberate gesture, is it not, to say we are watching we are ready in terms of Ukraine. And we could mobilise. Indeed, and it's interesting because only yesterday the government's own National Security Council met and, I'm told, was discussing the whole issue of Ukraine and what the possible next steps would be. Now, on the one hand, you've got the European countries, and the EU in particular, worrying about funding, for example, worrying about how to try and get the democratic process back on step, led largely by the Germans, and remember Chancellor Merkel is in town here tomorrow. But on the other hand, I'm told that government ministers were at that stage discussing Russia's options. One option they discussed was the possibility that Russia would send troops in mm. allegedly to protect Russian speakers mm. and, of course, its own interests in the Crimea, where there's a very large number of Russian speakers as well as a large amount of Russian a, military. Where it has a port. Exactly that. The other possibility was that they pull the plug on the financing of Ukraine and effectively say to the EU, you want it, you can have it, along with all the debt. Well, they've frozen the, 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 out of the 15 billion that was due from Moscow. They've only paid three and the rest has been frozen. D does it not strike you uh, an example of, of the increasing parochial nature of the mother of parliaments that Ukraine was not raised once during Prime Minister's questions? Now, I appreciate that this news uh, about testing combat readiness broke while it was going on. But at the Ukraine, we are taking a major foreign policy position. Mr. Haig uh, has been on television a lot of times. And we are being asked to step up to the plate and provide a lot of money as well. Why would not a single MP, never mind Mr. Miliband, raise this as an issue in Parliament? Well, funny enough, I think it goes back to the discussion we were having a while ago about the nature of PMQs. If Prime Minister's questions is increasingly backbenchers playing a party game so that everybody thinks that they're on the side of their party leader to try and get over that day's partisan point. The danger is people stop thinking for themselves. They stop asking the questions they want to know. Now, there was, to be fair, a big statement by the Foreign Secretary yeah. on Monday on Ukraine. Yeah. So some of these things but were you know, this raised. is BMQs, well, it's this live is the on television, forum. Yeah. on network TV. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's right. You would imagine, even if the worries about military preparedness by the Russians were not Which raised, the issue of money uh, yeah. might well have but been raised too. Andrew, surely on that, uh, I mean, the first thing it is, is to say we did have a very long statement on uh, Monday, a very full house. But it, you're talking about serious issues. You know, if, if you're right, the leader of the opposition, the man who hopes to be prime minister in a year's time, an important international issue, surely the question you should be asking is, why would he have a rather bizarre conversation about climate change and attacks on the environment secretary, inappropriate in my view, um, uh, when actually you're saying there are bigger issues to discuss? Well, what I'm saying is that there is a major international issue that confronts Europe mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, it's an issue that involves our foreign policy. Our foreign policy is part of Europe's foreign policy. And because we contribute to the IMF and to the European Union, British money is being asked for as well through these institutions. Why wouldn't that be raised? Yeah, and that's absolutely right. And there was, I would take Chris's point about the statement on Monday. And just because it's not raised at Prime Minister's questions doesn't mean to say I don't think people get the gravity of the situation or the issues that have to be pursued about that. I mean, equal, if you're a victim of flooding, you would well think that should be dominate at PMQs as well. well and I, I, I think one thing we uh, can say for sure is that flooding has been pretty well covered. Yes, but nonetheless, they're still very, especially with the UK Statistics Authority this making that an, point this, this morning. This is not an either-or argument, No, it's not it? an either-or argument. I don't want to do, do that. And I'm sure Ukraine will come back to either PMQ, certainly another statement. But I would have to say, and I wouldn't be partisan about it in the way I think Chris has been, I do think that the, way, what the UK Parliament has looked at the issue through the statement the other day and will continue to. Well, and... Uh, you know, well, events well, are do, moving, and I think we need to okay. be careful. We shouldn't just make it a party well, political issue in that way. Well, I don't do think. we have a view? Uh -huh. Do MPs have a view? Putting aside Mr. Putin's saber, saber rattling at uh -huh. the moment, do we have a view under what conditions we should lend Ukraine money and what assets we should demand as security? Because they're talking about 30 billion or so. 
Do we have any idea what conditions that well, should be lent under? Would that not be a legitimate subject for discussion or questioning of the Prime Minister? Well, I certainly should think it's a legitimate issue for discussion. And I wouldn't read into the fact that it didn't come up today, that people are not concerned about that. And I think there was some, certainly some discussion around George Osborne's comments, I think, about, you know, we need to give so much, so much money to protect the economy of Ukraine, which is obviously important. And Cathy Ashton has said the economic interests of Ukraine are vital to Europe and we must you know, intervene in that to, to protect the interests of Ukraine and look at the geopolitical balance that is now, I think, emerging as one of the big issues. And events are moving and you have to, you have to be temperate in how you deal with these matters. Do you agree with the Prime Minister that what he now calls climate change, we used to call global warming, is one of the most serious threats facing mankind? Well, there's no doubt the whole issue of energy, carbon emission. I mean, the, the truth is what Ed Miliband was trying to do today was to drive wedges between those who believe strongly in climate change, those who are less sure. I didn't, I'm ask, you about Mr. That, uh, I didn't ask you about Mr Miliband. I asked you, did you agree, do you agree with the Prime Minister that climate change is one of the most serious threats facing mankind? Climate is clearly a very real issue for us, uh, and it's something where we need to take steps. Is it one of, of the defenses. most serious threats facing mankind? Well, around the world, climate is clearly having a major impact uh, upon mm. different societies, and therefore uh, investment in this country and things like flood defences, but also the do use of the foreign aid budget to sure. protect... But do you believe that man-made climate change is one of the most serious threats facing mankind? Uh, there's no doubt that climate change is an issue around the world. An issue? Well, it's a very Lots serious of issue things around are the world. Issues. Yes. Ukraine's an issue. Mm -hmm. Price of bread's an, an issue. Why did Ed Miliband, why does he think anybody cares outside the Westminster Circle and the few people that follow this, whether uh, what he, he calls deniers, more accurately sceptics, of the energy minister and uh, Owen Patterson. Uh, he's talking about Michael Fallon and Owen Patterson. John Hayes, yes. I think he was. Is it John Hayes? John Sorry. Hayes. Sorry. 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 I apologise then for... Uh, and using this, uh, this rather toxic phrase, denier. Well, oh, I think it really matters, and I think people really do care about it. Genuinely, I think that. I'm not what, just what, saying, what, what, what is a denier? Well, I think it's someone who doesn't recognise that climate change is one of the, not a issue, but one of the most significant challenges we face as a country, but, as a world, and that governments have to take action now to protect us in the face of climate right, change. But if you and were I think to say, really if you were to say and if someone was to say that uh, there is no question the climate changing, uh -huh. and there is no question that man is contributing to that change, but I'm not sure how much man is contributing... Would that be a denier? Well, well, but someone who denies that it's um, that it's such a global no, that's challenge. That's not what I said. Would that be a denier? If you are, if yes. you're sceptical about the scale of man's involvement in this, is that a denier? Yes, that's a denier, and also the fact that government can't shouldn't take any action. Government and, is irrelevant, perhaps, in the resistance. To and if and you, it is important. And if you say, uh, I'm in no doubt that uh, the planet is warming up. Uh, but I am not sure by how much it's warming up and that some of the predictions may be alarmist and that it may be less than some of the predictions have made. Is that a denier? Yes, and a contributing factor towards that, but I think the key point that Ed Miliband... That's a was denier. But the key point that Ed Miliband was making, and why it's particularly relevant, I think, to current events, is the fact that the Environment Minister will not take a briefing from climate change experts in his own department. He will not receive official briefing on the fact, could climate change be contributing okay. to that and what consequent action you should take as a government well, we response to that? we know from the Met that. already that uh, the Met says that it can't find any well, don't scientific... You think, but, 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 uh, don't you think the government minister, who's oh. responsible for flooding... But he's read the Met report. No, but shouldn't he take a briefing from his officials? Do you not think that is an issue that we should discuss and be aware of? Yeah. The people who have an interest in that really should understand that. I think that's relevant. Final thought? Just one other thing that I think was important was what the Prime Minister was asked about the court case yesterday to do with the bombing, uh, the Hyde Park bombing. What was striking is that two representatives of the Democratic Unionist Party asked him to say that there should be no more of these, as they put it, get out of jail free letters, and he didn't. He did say he understood their anger, he understood the upset, he thought it was a mistake, but asked to say that these should not happen in the future. Okay. He clearly didn't say it. All right, we have to leave it there, Nick. Thank you. He also took a tougher line on strikes and implied that there may be a change of the law on the number of people that vote or on essential services. There was a hardening of the line at PMQs today.